Hello, and welcome to my talk. So firstly, I would like to start by expressing my sincere thanks to the CAPE Working Party for selecting me for the 2020 CAPE PhD Award. So in this talk, I will try to give a very brief overview of the different online process optimization approaches, which was also the main theme in my PhD research. So the main motivation for my PhD research uh, is the realization that despite the economic benefits, real-time optimization is not as widely used in industry as one would expect. So there are different reasons for this, and we try to list them in the order of importance. For example, optimizing the process requires detailed process models, which may be expensive to develop. Once we have the process models, the models need to be constantly maintained and updated in order to sustain the benefits of RTO. Solving the numerical optimization problem may also have computational issues or numerical robustness issues. And for some processes, steady state optimization may not be relevant. There could also be some dynamic limitations such as infeasibility due to dynamic constraint violations. And finally, choosing the right formulation for the problem at hand is important. So when talking about the limiting factors of RTO, the human factors play a very important role because the corporate culture and the technical competence that the company has access to plays a vital role in deciding what kind of optimization tools are used in practice. For example, the implementation and maintenance of advanced control and optimization tools require skilled engineers, which the company may not have access to. And without this, the full benefits of the RTO may not be realized. In order to address some of these challenges, we looked at different approaches to online process optimization. And in this talk, I will try to give a brief overview of these different approaches and place them in the context of online process optimization. So this is the outline of the talk, where I will try to provide a high level picture of the different tools that are available in this RTO toolbox. So let's start with the traditional steady state optimization, where we have a process that is subject to some disturbances D and we have some real time measurements. So we have a steady state detection to see if the process is operating at steady state. And if the process is operating at steady state, then we can or use the steady state measurements in order to update the static model of the process. And once the model parameters are updated, we can solve a steady state optimization problem to re-optimize for the set points. However, one of the fundamental limiting factors is the steady state wait time. If the process is operating in, uh, in transients for long periods of time, or if the settling time for the process is quite long, then the, the process would be operated suboptimally for long periods of time. So how can we address the steady state wait time issue? Well, the obvious is to use a dynamic RTO where we use dynamic models and solve a dynamic optimization problem. And since we can use a dynamic model, we can use the transient measurements to update the model parameters and solve a dynamic optimization problem to solve for the optimal set point trajectory. However, solving a dynamic optimization problem, it can be computationally intensive. So in order to address the issue, we proposed a hybrid RTO approach where we use the dynamic models to update the model parameters using transient measurements. And once the model parameters are updated, we use the corresponding steady state models to solve a steady state optimization problem to re-optimize for the set points. So this can be seen as something in between the steady state RTO and the dynamic RTO. And by using the hybrid RTO, we can achieve similar performance as dynamic RTO, but at computation times, similar to steady state RTO. Now, all these approaches requires us to solve a numerical optimization problem online, be it dynamic or static. However, solving a numerical optimization problem online may have computational and numerical robustness issues, and one may not want to solve numerical optimization problems online. So in order to avoid this, we can achieve optimal operation by using feedback control. And the main idea here is to translate the economic objectives into control objectives 
such that we can achieve optimal operation by using feedback control. So when we talk about translating the economic objectives into control objectives, one of the main questions that arises is what should we control? So if there are some constraints that are optimally active, then this is quite obvious. The simplest case would then be to control these constraints to its limiting value, such that we can achieve optimal operation. And this is known as active constraint control. Now for the unconstrained optimum, this is not quite obvious as it is not straightforward as what we should control in order to translate the economic objectives into control objectives. To this end, in order to translate the economic objectives into control objectives, first control the active constraints to its limiting value. Then for the remaining unconstrained degrees of freedom, we want to find the so-called self-optimizing variables. But what are the self-optimizing variables? So when it comes to finding a self-optimizing variable for the unconstrained optimum, then we need to have some kind of information about the process, which can be, for example, in the form of process models. So then one approach is to use the process models offline in order to find a linear measurement combination, which when kept at a constant set point leads to acceptable loss. So this is done by linearizing around some nominal operating conditions. However, as the process moves away from these nominal operating conditions, then the loss keeps increasing and the, the steady state loss may no longer be acceptable. Alternatively, we know that at the optimum, the steady state cost gradient must be equal to zero. So then the steady state cost gradient is the ideal self-optimizing CV. So then the idea here is that if we can somehow estimate the steady state cost gradient, then we can drive this to a constant set point of zero, then we can enforce this necessary condition of optimality. So we recently proposed one such model-based gradient estimation approach where the idea is to use the nonlinear dynamic models from the inputs U to the cost J and linearize this nonlinear dynamic model around the current operating point. And then we can use the locally linear dynamic model to estimate the steady state cost gradient as minus C A inverse D plus D. Then we can drive the uh, estimated gradient to constant set point of zero to achieve optimal operation. So we call this the feedback RTO approach. Both the self-optimizing control and the feedback RTO approach requires the use of models, be it online or offline. However, one of the main challenges is getting these models in the first place. Even if we do have some models, but due to lack of uh, knowledge or model simplification, the models may be structurally wrong. So in order to address this, we can use model free approaches where the main idea is to estimate the steady state cost gradients directly from the cost measurements. Several approaches such as extremum seeking control, NCO tracking control, hill climbing control, experimental optimization, they all belong to this uh, category of methods. Here, the main idea is to perturb the inputs uh, around the current operating point, And we look at the corresponding change in the cost measurement. And using this, we can estimate the uh, steady state cost gradient. And there are several different algorithms that, uh, that can be used to estimate this steady state cost gradients in a model free fashion. But in the interest of time, I will not get into the details of these different model free gradient estimation approaches. So as the disturbance changes, the set of active constraints may also change. For example, a constraint that is optimally active for a given disturbance value of D1 may no longer be active when the disturbance value changes to D2. Then in each active constraint region, we need to control the corresponding active constraints to its limiting value. And for the unconstrained MVs, we need to control the steady state gradient of the reduced system to a constant set point of zero. Alternatively, an equivalent but generalized framework would be to control the linear gradient combination to a constant set point of zero, where the selection matrix N is chosen 
such that it is in the left null space of the active constraint gradients. So now we can use this rule for all the active constraint regions where we control the active constraints to its limiting value. And for the unconstrained MVs, we control a linear gradient combination to constant set point of zero. And to switch between the different active constraint regions, we could use classical advanced control elements such as selectors for CVCV -CV switching or split range control for MVMV -MV switching and so on and so forth. For some problems, steady state RTO may not be relevant. For example, when we have frequent grade changes. So in these cases, we have to use a dynamic optimization problem in order to optimize the transients as well. So when it comes to a dynamic optimization problem under uncertainty, an important question that we have to ask is what is a good problem formulation? Well, from a practitioner's perspective, a good problem formulation must be easy to understand such that the operators who are the end users feel confident about using these controllers. A good problem formulation must also be low in complexity such that it is easy for process engineers who don't necessarily have a PhD to maintain and service these tools. And when trying to seek robustness against the uncertainty, the problem formulation must not be overly conservative if not the management may not be too happy about it. But from a more fundamental perspective, in the presence of uncertainty, we should optimize over a sequence of control policies as done in dynamic programming rather than just optimize for a single control trajectory. Now, this is a vast topic by itself, and without going too much into the details here, I would just like to mention uh, the multi-stage scenario-based MPC or the feedback min-max-based min MPC formulation here, which I looked at at my PhD thesis. So here, the idea is to propagate the uncertainty in the prediction horizon as a discrete scenario tree and the very nice thing that I just want to mention here is that by having different control inputs for the different discrete scenarios, this can be seen as uh, the discrete realizations from the optimal control policy. So therefore, this approach can be seen as an approximate way of solving over control policies. However, the main challenge here is that the problem size becomes quite large. And in order to address this, we can, for example, decompose the uh, problem into several smaller subproblems such that we solve each scenario in parallel. And we can use uh, primal decomposition to do this in order to ensure that the control input that is applied at the first sample is the same for all the scenarios. So with that, we have a toolbox of different online process optimization approaches where on one side we have numerical optimization based approaches where we use a detailed process model and solve a numerical optimization problem, be it static or dynamic. And on the other side, we have feedback based optimization where we achieve optimal operation by using feedback control. And in order to do that, we have to translate the economic objectives into control objectives. And that means we need to first control the active constraints to its limiting value. And for the unconstrained degrees of freedom, we can either use the uh, models offline in order to find a linear measurement combination, or we could use a linear gradient combination that could be used over different active constraint regions. And for so using gradients as self-optimizing CVs, we can either estimate the gradients using a model-based approach, or we could estimate the gradients in a model-free fashion. And to switch between the different active constraint regions, we could use classical advanced control elements such as selectors and split range. Having said that, the most important message that I want to say here is that the different methods here are not contradictory to one another, but they are in fact complementary. What this means is that the different approaches have its own advantages and disadvantages, and we can combine some of these approaches in a synergistic fashion in order to exploit the benefits of the different approaches. For example, we could use the models offline in order to find a linear measurement combination 
and use them in the fast layer to maintain the process in the near optimal region and provide fast uh, re re reaction to the disturbances. And then we can use the models online in the RTO layer in order to drive the process to the model optimum. And in the slow time scale, we could use model free approaches and use the plant gradients in order to drive the process to the plant optimum in the slow time scale. So we keep the process in, in the near optimal region in the fast time scale, and then drive the process to the model optimum in the medium time scale, and in the slow time scale, drive the process to the plant optimum. So with that, I would like to conclude my talk. And I would like to thank Professor Sigurd Skugestad for being an excellent advisor and for his unending support and encouragement. I would also like to thank the thesis examination committee, Professor Manfred Morari and Professor Jay Lee for their invaluable comments and feedback on my thesis. I'd also like to thank the process systems group at the NTNU. Thank you.